Park that is the inspiration of our Facebook Live today. It's a, like I said, a wood piece. For those of you who get my monthly newsletter, you'll see that I set a goal for myself to paint all of my excess wood that I have in my studio, glass, all those pieces. You know, we're all collectors and I have a ton of surfaces to paint. And so I really want to try to this year paint them and get them started um, and clean out a little bit, but not throw away necessarily. Hi, Debbie. Thank you. And so um, you doing that thought, I had a couple of these hearts that I'm not sure where I got it from, if it was the Dollar Tree or from Plaid or I'm not really sure, but it's about a fourth inch and it's 12 inches across. So, like I said, I wanted to do something with the heart, but I did not want to do just red and roses and things. So I was going through some of um, my older one-stroke books, and I came across the one that has a really cute outdoor swing. And when I say one-stroke, you know, of course, Donna is the designer of this. So there was a swing, outdoor swing, that had some spring flowers on that, just like here. So I took that and fit them all into a heart. And as I was painting, I realized all of these strokes were variations of a teardrop stroke. So then my my thought immediately went to Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. So this is our topic. I'm going to um, give a demo, uh, a learning session on the teardrop stroke that we use for our five petal flower, but then some variations. Um, there's two that I'm going to show today, and then taking those variations and making up different types of flowers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be working on uh, the items of this project. And like I do sometimes, I forgot to introduce myself. So you can't see my face right now, but I'm Nancy Smith, a One Stroke Certifying Elite Instructor with the Donna Dewberry Organization. And I'm in Maryland and I have the weekly Thursday Facebook Lives and that's why you all are here right now. Okay, well, the colors I'm going to start with is white and we use our multi-surface paint. This is titanium white. I'm gonna put a little more there. And the first stroke I'm going to demo is just the plain teardrop stroke the the stroke that you learn when you first start with one stroke and i will be using a number 12 flat brush now for a teardrop stroke we recommend that you instead of do the traditional double load we side load so to side load for a teardrop I'm in the white puddle of paint. I'm taking my brush and on the side of the puddle, I'm just going to stroke back and forth, get it to two thirds full. And then on here, I'm using Violet Pansy, should show you that. And I will side load and that means on the side of the puddle of paint, I'm gonna stroke this brush. So if you can see, I have almost full white and then a side of uh, violet pansy right there. And then I just um, go back and forth here. Teardrop. It's, we start with what we call a closed V. And I'm, I'm going to show you that on paper here. I'm, I'll have the purple on the outside. So when I make my closed V, I'm going to make a line right here. Let me get some more white so you can see that better. This point, let's say is the center point, and this line goes out to 11 o'clock. If this were a clock, 12 o'clock is straight up here, so the first guideline is to 11, and the second guideline is going to be at 1 o'clock. I'm always going back and getting a little bit of paint, um, also grabbing some for side loading there. Now, I have a number 12 flat, it has a really nice chisel edge. So, 
I'm putting that chisel edge on the left guideline here. The corner of this brush, the white, is going to be at the point of the um, closed V. So I put my brush on the guideline. The handle is straight up and down. Now, using my whole arm, I'm going to lean the brush into the center of that closed V and adding a little pressure to the top of my brush to form an up, what we call an up and over. It's the pressure that, I, the slight pressure I'm putting on the purple side of the brush that's having that brush go around, making that arc, the up and over stroke. And then when I get to the next guideline, I come back up, I'm on the chisel edge and I pick up. And that's how you make um, a basic teardrop stroke. If you need floating medium, you can add that to the um, brush. And I'll show you that in a middle, minute. I just want to show you another one. So here's the V. I put my chisel edge. I lean toward the middle. Let the brush go up and over. I come back down at the next guideline and pick up. Now, what we'll do with that is make a five petal flower. Okay. So I'm going to get more paint. Five petal flower. Sometimes when you're painting this, you may get four. And sometimes when you paint, you may get six. But always try to aim for five. Five is like the perfect number that fits. Four makes too big of teardrop strokes and six is um, like too skinny. And in your mind, visualize a gingerbread man. The first stroke that we do, I I'm sitting right here. So here's straight up for me. I'll paint one teardrop. So I'm laying my brush down, letting it go up and over, come back to the guideline. Now there's the head of the gingerbread. Now we can paint two arms right outside of that, right on the side of the head. Get more paint. Always come back. And when you, I've been going to my runway, but I also will come to the purple here, and that gets me the more, more paint. My clothes V, it's, I'm always going to use that as my point. Here's my V. It's going to be just like that. And on this side, the V is here. So if I were to turn my paper, this is going up. Here is the 11 o'clock position, and then here's the 1 o'clock position. So using the same stroke that I was talking about, the white side of my brush is going to be at the center. I'm going to press, hit, lean here, press down at the top, and come up and over and I'm at the guideline, stand up. Get more paint. And do the other side. Now, it's nice to, if you can go backwards, uh, it offers a balance to the flower. And I'll be later explaining the pinwheel effect that could happen. So if you can get to the point where you can paint your strokes backwards. It just helps in the look of your flower. And so I'm going to press up and over, come back to the guideline and stand up. I didn't get too much purple on that one. I'm going to restroke because I do want a nice purple edge on this flower. Okay. Now, so there's my three. And we got room for two more. So um, I'm going to put just a line right there in the middle. This will be the V for this side. And this will be the V for this side. And I failed to mention, when you make your V, and I'll do this on here. Do you see how I'm touching? Like all this part of the stroke is touching. But once I start that arc, there's, we're not touching that. That makes that uh, distinction between the petals. Down here, we're all touching. Up here, we're not. So it offers the, the look of um, a petal. OK. 
Okay, get more paint. And I'll paint two more strokes up and over here. And get more paint, but I'll just do this just to finish it off there. Now, did you notice I kept turning my paper? And it is so okay. Turn your paper that's comfortable to you. And when you're painting and you want strokes that go straight out, that don't have a bend to it or a turn, it's a good it's a good practice. Just turn it forward. If until you get proficient to, to where you can paint straight out um, off to the side. Okay, that's um, the five petal. And I just thought, while I got the purple, let me just show you. When you're painting this, it makes a gorgeous project. It makes a gorgeous bunch of flowers. Um, just a sec here, I'll check. Okay. So you, what we do is we overlap. And when we overlap, most of the time we'll turn our brush around and instead of have violet pansy on the outside, we'll have the white or the other color that you're using. And when I make my V, my first V, I'm overlapping that first flower. And when I stroke that, same process though, I'm leaning my brush, letting the top come up and over and come to the guideline. Um, you see how it overlaps and it makes it um, look really nice. So I'll just make another one right here. And for this, um, I'll just go around because this is also a way you can do it too. You don't have to do the arms first and then the legs. You can just keep going around. But you have to be mindful of the gingerbread look <laughs> because this is where you can get off kilter by not having your guides. But once you start doing five petals a long time, um, it's pretty easy just to do it like this. Okay. And then a cluster, we always do three. So I'll just quickly paint one more just to show you. And I'm going to overlap again. There's my first V. Lay my brush down, purple on the outside this time, and then just come up and over. Make my V up and over. Make my V on this side. I'll do it backwards again this time, up and over. And then I got this much space in the down here, so I made two. Up and over, and up and over. There you go. Then I didn't do this, but I have daffodil yellow um, in front of me today. And then with the handle of your brush, just make dip dot. Go into the puddle of paint and dot. Puddle, dot, puddle, dot. So that is our basic teardrop making a five petal flower. And that's what you're going to learn when you first start out uh, painting one stroke. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush. And on my palette, I'm going to put a uh, cobalt blue. Cobalt multi-surface. I thought I would do different colors. Different strokes, different colors, <laughs> just to um, make it interesting, I guess. I want to thank you all for being here. And I'm okay. I washed my brush, and it was a little damp, and I knew I would get muddy paint. So what I'm doing now is I'm just pinching that excess water out, and I'll side load. So I'm going to go fully white. Back and forth, back and forth till I'm two thirds, and then I'll side load into the blue this time. And then go back and forth. You can go back and forth here too, right on the edge of your um, side loading color. Um, both ways are good. Um, I do both. See, see here, I did some like that, but then here I went on to the runway. Okay, the next one I want to show you is with a little ruffle to the top and we call that the ragged wiggle teardrop and I'm getting these term these terms from our skill builder uh, book that we have that teaches on um, teardrops so here's my V 
even though I'm going to do, uh, it was called a ragged wiggle teardrop, I'm starting the same way though. My brush is going to start the same way. I'm putting my white on the corner, only because my blue is on the outside, um, right here in the center. I, lay, I put my chisel right on the edge. I lean my brush into the center of the stroke. This time, instead of going up and over, I'm going to let my brush wiggle just slightly. It's not a, a hard wiggle like our shell stroke. It's a very light wiggle. I'll get some more paint. Still do my gingerbread. Make my two V's right here. Start my brush in the middle there. Lean it down. Bring it up and let it just slightly wiggle. And then come back down to the chisel. Get more blue. Yeah, I was a little losing some of that blue there. And then um, let's go this way. See if we can do it with a wiggle going backwards. Okay. Not as great as the first one, but it will do. And what do we do if we have a stroke that um, we don't like? We can restroke, or when I do the cluster, I put, that's where I'll overlap the, um, the flower. Then here's the middle, and I'll do two um, strokes. But if you notice, I do, if I can at all, at any time, I will move my paper to where I'm always painting from the six o'clock, 12 o'clock position for almost anything that I do. That's how I paint, if I can. Okay. So you can see how cute that is. This is a really cute blossom. I love it. Um, I use this a lot too. It makes a really pretty flower. I'm just going to do first the blue. I'll do a double load here first. It's not a double load. It's an overlapping petal. Get more paint. And then I'll switch to white after I do this come here always maintaining the same size and you can do that by making sure that you have your little V's on your um, guidelines sample page now I was painting my V's as I painted you can very easily put all of your V's first I'm going to paint one more to keep with this um, cluster idea. So I could say, okay, there's my first V, here's my second V, and then here's my final two Vs. So you can, when you're starting out, you can definitely do that. And now I'm going to reverse my color and have, paint it the same way, but reverse it and then come around. Just want to get, make sure your white is nice and white so it shows up real good. And then I'll come around like this. Just for demo purposes, I'll just not get more paint right here. But now I will. There are times when you're painting, you could get two strokes out of a fully loaded brush. You just want to make sure your paint, your outside color is just really um, clean, bright. Okay, same, same center we can do here, the yellow dots. Okay. So two, two, this is teardrop, this is ragged um, edge or ragged wiggle. And, and like I said, notice it wasn't a tight wiggle like a, a shell stroke wiggle. Now, the next one in the final teardrop stroke that I'm going to show you, the pointed teardrop. And I'm going to uh, demonstrate that with pure orange. It's going to be orange and white. There we go. 
But you know what, before I go on to that, let me show you, you know, going back to our sample project. Um, here was the cobalt blue one I did. See how gorgeous it looks. It, it's the, with the ragged wiggle edge. I don't have any just simple teardrops on this, but I'm going to now show you the uh, pointed one and that's, that's here. And then after that, I'm going to show how to put this big flower together using the pointed teardrop. But you know what, even though I got orange, uh, let me show you this now too, before we move on to the next one. It's going to be orange, but it, it's okay. Orange, we can have orange flowers too. Whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to fully load into white. And then I want to side load. What I wanted to show when I did the ragged one, this is going to look familiar to you. You can do a ragged teardrop. So here's my little wiggle. We can do another one right next to it. Oh, just going to get some more orange. I'm overlapping though this time because I'm not doing a, a tier a five petal. I'm doing a little bud and you're going to recognize this one after I do this. Then there's just going to be a second a wiggle teardrop. Let's get more paint. And then I'm going to now do one that goes over both of these. I'm going to start right here. But my, my point is still at this like the center of the clock. And then I come back here and I'm going to do just a slight wiggle. And doesn't that look like the buds that we paint? So this is how you can make an easy flower bud. When you're painting um, on a project and you want a little bud, just do this stroke. I'm going to get a little darker orange so you can see the difference a little better. Come back and do another little wiggle teardrop. But notice it's teardrop. Then I'll come back to the paint, get white, and then come over and do another teardrop wiggle. And then if this this was, um, you know, like I said, the bud, you just bring your stem right on down. So that's how it's easily, using the same technique, you can make a flower bud. So now let's go into the, the um, pointed uh, teardrop. I gotta wipe my brush off a little bit. I um, sort of got a little messy, so I, I wiped it off. And then, but I'm still coming back here and stroking into the orange. Yeah, that's you just stroke to the side there. Okay, this is when I come and do a runway when I get sort of messy right there. Okay, teardrop. There's my V. This time, I'm going to, as I come up and over, I'm not going to wiggle and I'm not going to do an arc, but I'm going to do a point. A tip that I use when I'm teaching this is, you. here's our closed V. We can put a line right here in the middle. That's the 12 o'clock and this is to the center of the clock. So when I do my point, I know that's where I want to be because I want it to be in the center of um, this stroke. So uh, uh, I, I think white outside will be okay. I'm putting my brush on the chisel edge, leaning it, starting the arc, but when I get to that line, I'm coming up to a point. And I'm hoping you can see, uh, I'm, if you notice, when I came up, my brush was almost on the clock line, the 12 o'clock clock line. It Sometimes it's a little over, okay, but if you can, it's if it's on the clock line, um, it really helps to make a balanced stroke. And if you look at my stroke, you can see that that line is almost horizontal right with the V. So um, let me get some more white paint. So how you paint this We'll come, lean it down, we come up, we come up to the point, our brush is straight, and then we come back down, and we, and then I add 
excuse me, a little pressure because I'm doing that arc part right there. And then I'm back down to my guideline and I stand up. So let me get some more orange. So the stroke is, here's my V. And go ahead and do that center line. It really helps to keep, keep you um, straight. There's my, uh, my point, and then I come back down, uh, applying a pressure to the outside edge of my brush until I get to the guideline and I pick up. Now, this makes a cute five-petal flower. I'll just make one. Since I've already showed you how to make um, a cluster, because I want to really show you that full flower that um, is made with this stroke right here. So here's my first teardrop, the pointed teardrop, and then I come out. There's my line, and I come back down, press, and then come to the chisel. Okay, I, I have my V right here. There's my line. I press, I come up to a point, I'm standing up on the chisel, I come back down, put pressure on the outside edge of my brush, and come on down. Okay. And then I got um, two more to do. So there's my line. I didn't quite make it to the guide, and that's okay. I'll just sort of snuggle up to it right here. Here's my center line. And I just add a little extra pressure and that you know, sort of like, like I said, snuggles to the edge and it, it looks fine. And then my last one. Come up to the center line and then come on down and press and come down. And just for that demo, I'll put a yellow dot. But I think a, a different color dot would look prettier on that. So, okay, that. So now, using this stroke... Let's build this flower. And I have a guide to trace so I don't go out of control on the size of the flower. So um, that I had already painted this before and this was a good size. In fact, I think it was probably the size I used on my heart. So let's paint this. Remember... Yeah. And I hope I said it's pinwheel. Did I talk about a pinwheel? Okay, pinwheels. What that means is when you're painting a flower and you want all of your strokes to go straight out, you know, like I'm painting here and I want to go straight out, here, straight out. What will help a lot to not have that pinwheel is if when you paint, you do that little center line like I was demonstrating, especially when you get started. That way, you, you your stroke is always going straight out. If you don't, what happens is, as people go around a circle, if they're not turning their paper, um, especially the beginners, not turning their paper, or they don't have like a, a guide that will direct them which direction they want to go to, what happens is your strokes start bending. And so as, if I were to go around this circle and not be concentrating on having my strokes go straight out, next thing I know, my strokes are angling. For example, I'll just paint it with paper right here. I mean, with paint. My first stroke could be out. And then if I don't concentrate going out, next thing I know, my next stroke will be like this. My next stroke will be like that. And all of a sudden, can you see how they're angling? And that's what we call a pinwheel. That's what we mean when we see your flowers look like a pinwheel. It happens frequently when you're learning sunflowers. When you have, you know, you've pounced your donut and you want all of your um, one stroke leaves to come out. A lot of times people go, oh, I can do one stroke leaves you know and they start doing it next thing you know they got an angle they got the pinwheel so even on something like that you it's 
it's a good idea at the beginning, especially when you're learning, to let your paper turn in so you go straight out. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to fully load uh, with white. I'm going to add some orange on my brush, side loading right here, and go back and forth. Okay, and I want the white on the outside. So here's going to be my first V. So here's the V, and um, here's the middle going straight out. So I'm touching, and I'm leaning, sliding to a point, coming up. My brush is straight on that 12 o'clock line. I come back down, lean against the outside, and come to a point. Now this one is not going to look like a five petal, so I don't have to be concerned with hugging that part of the stroke, that, that one edge that we had right here. Let me move my paper. This edge. I'm not going to hug the edge. I'm just going to touch where this roundness is. So here's my V here, and there's my middle. So I lean, scoop out, come to a point, and then come back down and finish it off. So I'll just go around this circle because I do want to show the flower, but um, Always being mindful of where that center is and letting my brush come up to a point and come back down and flaring out on the side. I probably won't tell you every time, but I'm always coming back and getting white and orange. Here's another V, another center. And I'll just go around this circle here. Try to, I think I'll try to for time purposes, uh, try to do two strokes with one set of paint. And, and of course, when you're home, you're not on a time limit. You don't have to rush. You can take your time doing this. And take, take your time practicing. This is all that brush control, part of those three Ps. Pressure. I'm pressing. I'm leaning against the outside edge and I'm coming down. And then paint because we want this nice white edge on the outside. So you always want to come back and get some new white when you're painting on your surface. For uh, newbies, I hope um, this is helpful for you to learn your teardrop stroke. And then, then after you, you master the teardrop, bump up your flowers a little bit by using the two variations that I just showed you. They make, um, they really do make really pretty flowers. And we use them all the time. I even use the um, five petal on my glassware, it makes gorgeous um, bouquets. So there was the first row. Now look at it. Did you do you see them? They're all going out. You don't have anything turning, so you don't have the pin, the pinwheel issue that we sometimes can get. And that's how I that's that was my tip to do that. Okay, next la layer is the same way. I'm going to keep the white on the outside. Now, when I paint the second layer, I'm going to overlap these guys, but I don't have to go all the way up. I don't have to go too high. Let me get my pencil here. I, all I have to do is come up about this high, you know, and that covers up that space right there. So my V, I start out, this is another thing. I start out where my V is in the center of these two. And if I can maintain that around the circle, great. And if I can't, no problem. <laughs> you know, I, I, do, I don't um, stress over where are they touching. I'm just, I just need another layer of petals. 
Now, so here I am. See my, my arrows going out. So when I do my touch, pick up and touch down and come down. That's what we're concerned about is um, that they're going straight out. And I'll just keep going, um, get some more right here. My brush is getting a little fluffy. That's why these strokes are getting so big. Um, I think I'm just gonna wipe it off real quick. I'm not at a point that I wanna clean it. I just wiped it off. I use the number 12 a lot. And so I always have extras on hand because um, you do, for a lot of what we do, we want a really nice chisel edge. And when your brush gets too fluffy, it's time to let it go and grab a new one. When I um, say let it go, I keep them because there's times um, when it doesn't matter if you have a chisel. For example, our dab flowers, you know, we don't need a good chisel edge for that. And when I'm base coating or um, some different types of strokes, it's really okay to um, not have a good chisel. Okay, so there's the second one. Now, I, there's, depending on how big your flower is, I did this size because I knew I could do three rows. But if you got a bigger flower, um, either use a bigger brush, like your three-fourths inch, or um, just make more of um, these teardrop petals. So I just know I only have to do one more row. And so I'm, now because I know I'm on my last row, here's my center of my flower. So I want all of my petals, like, like your, our five petal flower, they all touch at one place, that's where these are, they're all gonna to touch in that one place, because this is my center of my flower. So just come up and fill it in. But it's amazing how fun um, this little stroke is. And I love, like I said, the, the wiggle one. Oh my gosh, use that all the time. These are good, good filler flowers, the five petal ones. And then if you have variations of how to stroke them, um, they look like different flowers. They look like a different stroke. Okay, so there you got it. So here's that flower. And that was all done with a teardrop. And for a center, um, I'm just gonna, I have yellow, so I'm just gonna continue using yellow, but I'm gonna add a touch of green. Maybe. Come on, there we go. And I'm going to pounce a center. To do, I'm not gonna dip dot, I'm gonna pounce. This is our little mini scruffy. It says one fourth inch. So sometimes you'll hear People say mini, and then other times it's, you know, it's this, the one fourth inch. So here's the mini. Now, when you use a mini uh, scruffy brush, you don't really double load it. What, initially, what we're going to do is in the lighter color, I'm going to pounce my whole brush in there. If you can see, it's all there. Then I'm going to, let me put my plate down. I'm going to pounce back and forth a little bit. Then, with half of my brush, I'm going to pounce into my other color of paint. So see how my brush is now half and half? And then I could come back and pounce. Let me put down pounce. So this is how we load small brushes, even small flat brushes. We go into the one lighter color first and then go into the darker color. And then when we um, go on our plate, you can see that we've got the two colors. So using with the green, okay, I'll have my flower here. So with the with the green on the bottom of my uh, center, I'm gonna just 
with my brush just in the center, pounds up and down. It's a little light, so I'm going to go into the dark green just a little bit more and pounce it like that. So isn't this isn't that a cute flower? <laughs> just with a with a um, teardrop. So let me show you this again, and I will, um, like I said, post the picture. I'll pull it up a little bit, and that was this this photo um, or picture right here. Just so you know, uh, on if you do want to paint this, I use a number eight flat with just citrus green, and I could I had I I'll just take five minutes and real quick show you how we make that little vine or fern. So I'm fully loading into citrus green. And to make these little vines on backgrounds, you, on the chisel edge, and I, in, in this case, I just used one color. And I came and just make yourself a little wiggle line on the chisel edge. And then what you do is you just walk up the, the vine, painting one stroke leaves, um, angle one stroke leaves. So what, what um, the guideline would look like is here's my um, 12 to um, 6, and then I'm at an angle, so my line's coming out like this. So I push, turn, lift this way. Now on here to offer um, some different colors, I actually painted the stems with sap green. So when I'm all, this is not what we normally do with leaves, but after I painted these, I came back with the darker green. And I can show you that real quick. So what I do, what I did was I just walked up this vine, always going back and getting more paint. These are uh, the angled one stroke leaf. They're like also one of my favorite leaves. And I'm just coming up, up this vine and doing these push turn lifts. Let me go back. Push turn lift. So I'm going up and then I end up with that. Now, like I said, I wanted that light green on the background, but then, um, to offer some distinction uh, between the, um, the stem and the leaf, I got a little bit of sap green. And then that's what I did for my stems. I did little stems like this. You know, this isn't, you know, this is just what I did for this. It's not like a, a typical way we paint. But I, I did not want to have a double loaded look. I wanted a single loaded look, but then I needed some another color into that vine. So I added some green.